I got I know how to do kung fu now because I got the bat <laughs> the bat soup disease. Uh, no, all joking aside, today's giveaway and I do by the way have the bat soup disease. You'll hear about it in today's podcast. Uh, today's giveaway is Maps Anywhere, a great at home workout program. Requires no equipment except for maybe some resistance bands and your body weight. So it's great for those of you that don't have access to a gym right now. Here's how you can win access to Maps Anywhere. Leave a comment below. Uh, in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode, make it a good comment. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll win that program for free. You also need to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. One more thing before you go, before you fast forward, I know you want to see this podcast and hear what happened. We'll tell you all about it. Don't worry about it. Um, one more thing, Maps Strong and Maps Powerlift, both 50% off. Go check them out. Head over to mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code August Special with no space for that discount. All right, enjoy the show. So we finally digitized Justin. Yeah. We got all the the best of them. <laughs> turned them into a digitized version. I kind of like this version. It's Al- nice. Although they, you know, they say uh the camera it's adds cleaner. adds 5 to 15 pounds. They lied. Yeah, it's like 30. Yeah, it looks like 30 to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Hey, you look even guys. more fat on Zoom. <laughs> hey. So <laughs> Hey, so listen, yeah. Justin, you're like you're you're such a team player normally, right? And uh normally you're the only one that didn't uh have the bat soup. So what the hell? Yeah. What's going on? Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know. I think it's somewhat cheese related. It's gotta be cheese <laughs> and whiskey related somehow. I was trying to really put it together because I was in the room with you guys. I spent a lot of time with you guys. I mean, we've we've cuddled. Yeah. So yeah. I don't know why I don't have it. You and Adam share underwear half the time. <laughs> nothing. You got nothing. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. people don't just sort of skip right over me. Yeah. So people don't know we got the uh, we got the bat disease. So our yeah. I, so I'll tell you what happened with me. Right. It's a funny story. So I'm up in Truckee with Jessica, the baby, and then she has some friends visiting, mm-hmm. and <clears throat> we're all hanging out. And it was Friday, and all of a sudden I was feeling like kind of tired, you know? And I was trying to be like energetic, charismatic cuz I want her friends to feel, you know, like, like you're cool. Yeah, I want the- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I want to hey, I'm the cool guy. I'm the yeah. cool guy. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I take so much <laughs> take so much energy I swear to fake it like that. Yeah. No. No, I want <laughs> Well, he goes, what would Adam do in this situation? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah. I have so many witty comments all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's me. No, I I wanted them to feel welcome and have a good time. I wanted Jessica to have a good time so i'm like trying to take care of the baby so she could spend time with her friends and <clears throat> around dinner time i was like man i'm like wasted i feel tired this is weird so whatever <clears throat> at nine o'clock i'm like honey i'm gonna go to bed i feel tired i just don't feel that and i just feel like i need to go to bed she's like why i'm like i don't know maybe it's the smoke because it was fires up there right hell of smoke up in the yeah. trucky area so i'm like maybe it's the smoke or whatever so i go lay down and then I get a, a text from uh, Andrew, our our YouTube producer, and it's a picture of his COVID. test. Yeah, and it's positive, and that's all he sends. Yeah, hey guys, thought I should let you know. I'm like, you mother. <clears throat> so I tell Jessica, I'm like, honey, this is this is the deal. I think I'm I'm sick, and Jessica's like, no, you're just a hypochondriac. It's all in your head. I'm like, honey, I I have body aches. I'm tired. No. Now you're fine. It's all in your head. Like she just keeps hammering me about this. And then she's like, doesn't your team know to not tell you? Like nobody should tell you because then you freak out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I, I know that, Jessica. So that's why I lied to you on Friday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know because you yeah. on the text, Adam's like, I feel fine. I'm like, yeah. That's weird. Yeah. I don't feel good. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I'm 100%. <laughs> yeah, so. I don't know. I guess you guys have been banging pangolins or something. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pang- pang- that's right. It's the pangolins. So that was it, and so then it, that we saw it's that. The penguins. Then the next day, I woke up and I had a you know very low grade fever, hundred, and then and then the next pictures I get are, I think who who was next to test? Well, Doug? first what happened was you you messaged the <coughs> the main thread with all of us, and Doug goes, "Oh, I'm not feeling good either," and you go, "I'm not feeling good," and everyone's like, "Oh shit," and then you're like, "How you feeling?" I'm like, "Oh, I'm fine," but yeah. I had just told Katrina, "I'm like, hey, I think I'm getting sick." <laughs> 
And what a dick. Yeah. So she's like, why didn't you tell Sal? I said, I'm not going to fucking tell Sal. Guys, I already, I'm fine. I already know how he's going to get. If I tell him I'm sick, he's going to start thinking that we all have it and we're all going to freak out and get all, you know, it's like, so I'm just going to, I'm going to wait it out till this to see what this, what happens. Oh, you're so thoughtful. <laughs> so uh, for me, yeah. it was Friday. So we drove down, we took the Camaro down to, um, we actually took the one. So I drove the one all the way down the coast. That's a nice drive, right? Yeah. It was oh like, wow! You took the Camaro. How how'd she run? All the way, bro. It was great. It was a we took we this drove, Camaro's a boy. So by the way, <laughs> no way. It identifies it's a as a boy. No, it's a girl. It's definitely oh, it a girl. is. Yeah. yeah. Well, it transition. So okay. It's it's okay. uh, a four and a half hour drive down the one all the way to a place called Sycamore Springs. Never heard of this yeah. place before. And it's like I've a, been there. Oh, you have. Awesome. Yeah. That's yeah. That's a cool spot. Real cool spot. It was yeah. just you and Katrina. Yeah, well, we literally what we decided to do it was kind of a cool little uh, trip, right? We everybody had the time off, <clears throat> and so and my sister was flying in to watch Max, so we had this time to get off to leave, and we both were like, "Well, what do we want to do?" And I'm like, "Ah, you know, I don't know," and we just kept delaying planning anything, and so the day comes, and we're like, "You know what? Let's just let's get in the Camaro, let's get on the one, and let's just go south," and We'll, vent, we'll pull over, we'll eat when we're hungry, maybe we'll do some wine tasting along the way because there's a lot of good wineries, and then if we feel like it, we'll crash somewhere uh, or we'll drive back home. And so literally, that's, we just packed a bag just in case, and then we just headed south and cruised the whole one and pulled over and had place, stopped and ate. And But the whole way down, I did have like this like itchy throat, and I was like, hmm, I don't feel great, but I don't feel bad either. Because it didn't definitely didn't stop me from smoking or drinking that night. So because mm. we partied all night long, we, oh, yeah. st- we stayed at that Sycamore place, which was cool. Uh, cool little like bungalow with a uh, fireplace and a uh, you know hot tub in your in a private hot tub in your deck, and it's like out in the woods. So you kind of have like this super privacy. Beautiful little place was a was a Nat- natural springs, right? Yeah, There's that little bit of a. Uh, you know, odor, but other than that, it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, the the salty. Oh, the yeah, sulfur. the sulfur. Yeah, yeah. No, it was uh cool, really cool spot. But so that happens. Then uh, the next morning, I wake up, and I'm not a hundred percent sure still. Even though the text message have came in that everybody's getting sick, am I hungover or am I like getting sick? And then I look at how much I drank, and I'm like, you know what? I only split a bottle with Katrina. Like, I that's not very much. A bottle of wine is what, four glasses of wine? So, yeah. I mean, even if I had more of it with three glasses at most I had, I was like, that ain't that ain't making me feel this way. So at that point, I had, I had submitted that, okay, I'm getting sick. So we, we decided to not stay any longer because I didn't know if this was going to get progressively worse, like from all the horror stories that you hear on the news, right? So I'm like, okay, well, let's get in the car and get going. So I'm, I'm not bad, I said, but I don't want to risk, one, I don't want to risk possibly getting you more sick or... Uh, two, I'm getting so bad that because I don't want to make her drive the Camaro. She's getting her in the Camaro is already hard enough as it is. Letting her having her drive it, she would really, be, yeah, she'd be all paranoid. So I'm like, let's drive back. So on the drive back, I was pretty much still good. It wasn't till day two did the like the migraine headache. Now hit. is that when you got the test? Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. I, we had to go through like God. I must have stopped at ten different CVSs to finally. They were sold out everywhere. Yeah. Well, I good. Well, at least you found one. I'm up in Truckee, and it's like couldn't find any. No, nowhere. I couldn't find nothing. So I was like, whatever. But you guys all tested positive, except of course the non-team player Justin over there who mm-hmm. uh, seems to be okay. <clears throat> you know what's weird though is Doug, who you know, and I've had my suspicions for a while. I'm just gonna say I'm on air right now, so that if something happens to me, you know that Doug did something. <clears throat> Doug is probably a vampire, and and there's there's lots of things that have happened over the years that made me yeah. suspect. Right, for one, he seems to be aging backwards. When we look at pictures of when we started Mind Pump, he's like Benjamin Button. Yeah, Adam and I clearly yeah, got he's older, like a little baby in a year. <laughs> yeah, like we <laughs> so cute. Put, him in, put Doug in a Bjorn. Put Doug in a Bjorn when we podcast. We yeah. we clearly look older. Clearly, like there's no I can't even. You know, pretend. Doug looks younger every time. And then he never gets sick. Never gets sick. And he kind of felt something. And then all of a sudden, nothing. You feel nothing, Doug? No, I feel something. <coughs> what do you yeah. feel? Yeah. No, I've, I've felt something all along. <coughs> Started out with some kind of body aches. Um, a little cold, you know, like cold and hot. 
Oh, right, yeah. the, the, the the chills and then a little <clears throat> bit of the sweats that go along with that. It's kind of weird, though. I think on the second day, my back felt like like it was sunburned. Mm. That was a weird Ooh. symptom. Interesting. Uh, but after that, it's just been mainly just uh, could weakness. also be the herpes. That could be it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just a little bit of weakness and laying out naked. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> And uh, just being tired, you yeah, know, I've yeah. been sleeping a lot. No, nope, so, nobody talks about the absolute worst part of it, though. Yeah, because nobody. They talk about all these random symptoms. You hear all these scare stories. On and I don't hear anybody mention. Dude, that's the that. Okay, there's two things that are terrible. One is the fear because had I not known that this was a virus that's out there that's doing things, I would have just been like, oh shit, I got a, a kind of a bad cold. Yeah, that's it. And I know everybody's different, <clears throat> but a majority of people have mild symptoms. That's just the statistics, right? So I wouldn't have known. It's the fear, and then I know what you're going to say, the isolation. The fucking solitude. That is the worst, man. <coughs> Knowing that I'm on, what, day six or seven right now, and I've been... So in our place, <clears throat> and I guess I'm I'm lucky that we have a, a good size room downstairs, <clears throat> so I have like a, a big, big, nice room where I have a, a nice big bathtub and all kinds of space and a, and a TV down in my room down there. But, bro, it's the closest goddamn thing to prison. And then to hear my son outside, like, looking yeah, for his dad. That's the worst. Oh, it's just, like, so awful. And then knowing that I can't go out there and play oh, with him. My, my son, if he makes, because I'll be, like, because I'm, I'm isolated to my room as well. But every once in a while, you know, if the door's open, I'll see him across the way. <clears throat> He'll make eye contact with me and, you know, smile or make a cute noise, trying to encourage me to grab him, you know, to pick him up. Mm -hmm. And I can't. So I'm like, this poor kid thinks dad all of a sudden doesn't want to hang out with him. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's breaking my heart. That's got to be the the worst the worst part of it. You know, it was really weird. So I posted on Instagram a picture of the positive test and that, you know, this is what's happening. Here's how I feel. And then here's some of the supplements I'm taking. And I put in the, in the post, I'm not a doctor. I'm not recommending this. This is just what I'm taking. And it's like standard, run-of-the-mill, over-the-counter Vitamin C, vitamin D, quercetin, zinc, baby aspirin, melatonin. Like all that is very standard, buy anywhere. It's also kind of standard of care. It's, it's also recommended. <clears throat> right, standard of care, right? Instagram takes it down and I get a notification that I was that it's a dangerous post, that I'm giving dangerous advice. I was like, what? This is insane. Now they reviewed it and then they put it back up. So they took it down for like five hours and then randomly put it back up. I'm like, this is so crazy how vigilant they are over anything. I didn't even mention the name of the virus or anything in the post either. It literally was just, here's I, what I'm taking. I picture some like pimpled face fucking 19 year old kid who like <clears throat> does that. Like this is job, you know, sees those things yeah. and just, they just pull them down. Like, no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Reject it. We <laughs> only report super negative stuff yeah oh he fear, said fear 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 he said mild yeah. take it off yeah. promote the fear of it it, it must be terrible for everyone no it's it's unbelievable and I, look i know there's there's definitely people out there that have had really bad uh responses or whatever but for me it's been very mild it's been a very mild thing now i think <clears throat> there's a couple reasons if I, and I'm, this is pure speculation obviously i'm metabolically healthy so i think that makes a difference i'm relatively young um, but the, 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 the one thing that's interesting, remember, was it last year yeah, when really bad? Yeah. Jessica and I, this is when it <clears throat> like was really the, the, the whole pandemic was becoming a thing and Jessica was pregnant with the baby and we both got really sick with all the symptoms we had terrible, like yeah. I, we had the fever, her cough was so bad. My, I had a cough too, but her cough was so bad that she would literally throw up from yeah. coughing so hard. And it lasted like, it was like a week, like a whole week of that. It was nasty. Now, we didn't get tested because back then they they didn't test everybody like they do now. So our doctor just kind of said, hey, you know, unless it gets really bad, just stay home. Yeah. So we never tested. But I'm wondering if either I had it then, a different variant of it, or I had something similar enough that gave me some partial immunity. I'm wondering about that. You know? Well, I thought we did too, but then we went and did the that antibody test over at Red Dot <laughs> afterwards and said we didn't have it. So, but I'm with you. That was that was up there. That I would say was a top <clears throat> top 3 worst flus or whatever it was that I've ever had. 
this that I have right now doesn't even crack the top 20. Yeah. Yeah. No, to your point, had I had, had there not been all the fear around it and we test and all that bullshit, this is literally something that I would have texted you guys. Uh, hey, I'm going to stay home from, from work because I'm coming down with a cold and I don't want to get you guys sick. It would have been one of those deals. Yep. So it would not have been yeah. something where I was – paranoid about anything or going to the hospital for sure now people are, are people have asked me in dms and i, I must have gotten 150 dms at least uh after i posted you know the positive whatever and most of them <coughs> most of them people asked me if i had gotten <coughs> vaccinated so oh were you vaccinated so it's like a big thing right so <clears throat> and the answer is no i was not vaccinated so if anybody's wondering why it's because there's microchips in the vac. No, that's, not why. <laughs> that's not why I wasn't vaccinated. Uh, I pers- <laughs> way to go. This yeah. episode just got pulled. I'm just kidding. That's not <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah. The lizard, the lizard people made it. Yeah. That's, <clears throat> that's not why. It's because uh, I'm not an, in a high risk category, and also because I personally, it's my own personal choice. So if you disagree with my choice, that's fine because you're not me. My personal choice was I wanted to wait until it was fully FDA approved because up until now it's still under emergency use uh, authorization. And so I'm just like, look, I'm not high risk. Let me wait a little bit and wait until it gets FDA approved. And if I get sick in the meantime, uh, I'm not high risk. So I'm probably going to be okay. So that's the reason. But now that I have it and it's confirmed, well, now I have my, you know, some immunity. So now I'm okay. So now you're for people to approve. Huh? Well, isn't the interesting part that uh, you can still contract yeah. the disease and also spread the disease even with uh, the vaccine? So, yeah. uh, you know, it, of course it's going to mitigate symptoms, but yeah. uh, people need to realize that. Yeah, but the data does show that a lower rate, right? So the data is still showing that people who are vaccinated still get it at a lower rate and still um, spread it at a lower rate. So it's still... There, I think it's a good idea for a lot of people. I'm not anti any of that stuff. I will tell yeah, you you're high I, risk for sure. For sure. I'll tell you what I'm anti. I am anti uh, government uh, mandating it for anybody. That's the now if you're a private business, you have every right to say uh, you can't come into my business if you're not whatever. That's fine. But government doing it like you see what they did in uh, what they're doing like in France. There was a video in France, this was Paris, people are sitting down at coffee shops and cops are going to the, co- like walking around and while people are having coffee with their family, uh, can you show me your, that your, your, your passport or vaccine yeah. passport? And that's Where's like, your papers? <clears throat> can you believe wow. that people are standing for yeah. that? Wow. <clears throat> that's a dangerous precedent. You did see though, I, you, I mean, we're in America. I, I have, I still have faith in us. Yeah, I have faith. We have a second amendment. That makes a big difference. I'll yeah, yeah, that yeah. No, I, I, no I, I mean, I have faith in us. You saw what happened with the airlines, didn't you? Mm. So Delta came out first and said that all employees mandatory vax or they'll be fired by a certain time. But then Southwest, just Southwest, and <clears throat> I should get my facts straight on all the other companies. There's like three or four other airlines, uh, uh, obviously not Delta, that came out and said they will not uh, require. require. Yep. So, so, you're, so what I what I predict is going to happen is, uh, and and I, I rightfully so. Hey, this is a this is America, and it, if it is your business, and you want to limit the people that come in uh, for uh, because you don't because they're not vaccinated or they don't have a passport or whatever like that, then so be it. Who? Which ones, Doug? You pointed it up for me. Yeah, That's, American Delta and Southwest. So Delta is one that uh, is not. Oh, cool. Uh, click on that again, though, so you can read the whole thing, because I, I believe Delta was the one that came out and said originally that they would have to. Yeah. I had the article saved. Interesting. Um, but yeah, that, that that's a response to one of the airlines originally saying that they were going to force all employees well, to think do that, about now they're going the other direction. Here's what I like to do to explain to people, <clears throat> just to make it very simple, because uh, I think sometimes people get confused with it, but it saves people and whatever. Okay, so here's the deal. Imagine if Adam and I are hanging out. Hey, what's up, Adam? Hey, what's up, Sal? Hey. And then Doug comes over and goes, no, neither of you guys can hang out with each other. I'm like, fuck you, who are you to tell me who I can and can't voluntarily interact with? Okay, doesn't matter if Doug is Doug or Doug is the government. You have no right to tell free people who they can and cannot interact with. That is our choice. Now, why is it different for the government than it is for private companies? Private companies have their own private property. I own my house. 
I can say to anybody, well, yeah, private, you can't come in my house. A private company would represent you, <coughs> you or me. And yeah. I have the right to say, <clears throat> I don't want to hang out with you. That's right. So. Government has the power to legislate, fine, which is essentially steal your property, jail, okay? There's the only legal entity that exists that can jail you, and it's also the only entity that can legally kill you. This is why you don't want to allow the government to have the power to force you to do anything with your own body. And again, at the end of the day, who owns your body? You or somebody else or the government? You do. And by the way, this, this, this is true for the majority too. I don't care if 99% of the country says that I can't hang out with Adam. You're not me and Adam. We decide we want to hang out, then that's what we're going to do. So it, it's got to be real. Choice. It's got to be a, a, a voluntary choice, yeah. And leave it at that. <clears throat> this is, and by the way, if we allow them to do this, like, get like, off your soapbox. No, I, I'm sorry. You're they did this in New York. It's pissing me off. <laughs> get off your goddamn soapbox. <laughs> no, right they now. did. They, they're doing this in New York, and it's it's scary because the second you let them do this, then uh, it's no different. Like, why not? Uh, let's yeah, ban but I, food. I tell you, I have, like I said, I have I have faith in in America, man. And, and you're seeing it with certain. You're going to have some companies that are going to get on board with the bullshit, and then you're going to have some companies that say, hey, there's an opportunity for yeah. us to be, do the opposite. And yeah. I don't I don't think we're going. I mean, it, I don't well, want to. We have checks and balances. That's, that's right. All well, it's a good say. thing we have states. You're right. There's yeah. a federal yeah. and state. Such, uh, yeah, and yeah, you're system. and you're seeing things like that with Florida and things like that. So in Texas, <laughs> and so. You know, I mean, uh, I, I have faith. I have faith there's going to be okay. But I do, we, we do have to, since we're all on the fucking negative Nancy train right now. Boom. Uh, and I'm going to move us out of this uh, conversation because I'm already- Get out of here, Nancy. I'm, I'm tired of talking about the, the pterodactyl disease. So that's what I got. So. It's actually from Brontosaurus. So. Oh, what is that what it is? So, yeah. But we do have to talk about something else that is uh, sad, man. And that was the news that came out uh, this weekend when we were all sick. Uh, I could not believe it uh, when I saw it when our friend uh, John Meadows. Oh, very sad. Yeah, passed. very very tragic. Very sad. He's a father of uh, two young boys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Very, very sad uh, news. 40, and a, and a, 49 years old. And an amazing man. Amazing, amazing man. Yeah. Good father. Good <clears throat> dude. Very like, nice guy. Um, and you can see it actually gives me chills like talking about it because um, I don't remember the last time somebody passed and I saw this many people uh, write about him. I don't know if you guys have been watching. Oh, it's all over the fitness space. Yeah. yeah I, Every fitness yeah channel was was you know talking about it's, it. So it's, that, that, that was good. It's so it's so cool. You know, it, it's it's so sad and unfortunate um, to to leave that early. But at the same time, too, if I was going to go out that early, I could only I could only wish and pray that I I affected people like that. Yeah, enough that yeah. days we're like a week later now, and people are still writing long old posts about and sharing videos and clips and stories of how he positively impact their life. Mm -hmm. That's pretty fucking rad. Yeah. So even though it was yeah. a, sh a shortened life, the, the amount of lives that that man impacted in a positive way in 49 years, uh, most people will never come close to that in a hundred years. So yeah. I think that's a, a positive note on, on, on a very you know, sad, sad, sad note. I think about his boys, right? And what's cool is that because he had a bit of a public presence. So he's been on podcasts, he's been on media, you know, uh, his boys will be able to look back at that stuff and kind of connect, reconnect with their dad, you know, after he's been gone for a while. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Which is, which is cool, but very sad at, at such a, uh, a young age. Life is not guaranteed. You know, it's funny when, when people complain about getting old, gets a luxury, you know? Oh, I hate aging. I hate that I'm getting older. Like not everybody has the luxury of, of getting older. It's uh, it's interesting that we don't embrace it. You know what I mean? Because some people they they don't get the chance. You know. Well, it also reminds me of the, the get get busy living or get busy dying type of deal too, <clears throat> yeah. right? It's like you you never know like how long you're going to be on here, and if you are going to go early, you'd hope that you you lived a, a pretty full life. And I'd say that guy lived a pretty full life as far as the the amount of impact that he made in the yeah. space and in the place that he has a lot of passion towards. So. Um, and a lot of I don't know if people for that have found Mind Pump in the last year or so may not know this. We did a great interview with him. Um, in fact, yeah. it was, uh, I remember after he left, saying that was one of the best interviews he ever did, and he reshared it on his platform and actually uh, did 
did a nice intro. I don't know if you guys ever saw that. I did. Yeah, he did a nice mm-hmm. nice intro to uh, our interview with him. I wish we would have videoed it. I wish we, we didn't have video back then. So it's just the audio version of, of us talking to him. But great conversation, great man, and uh, real unfortunate to see him go. Yeah, too bad. Oh. So um, just kind of change gears a little bit. Have you... Have you done anything in terms of for for you, Adam? Because I know Justin's obviously he's, he's fine, but lame. Yeah. <clears throat> Did, have, bleep, bleep, blah, bleep, bleep. have Sorry, you done? What I was, was that? Uh, you know, I was out there for a second. <clears throat> have you done anything like movement wise to help yourself feel better, like stretching uh, or? So every day, even though I've I've read um, mixed reviews on this, which I think is interesting. Did you know that there's mixed reviews on the sunlight for people who have it? No, I don't know that. Oh yeah, Google it. Google it, Doug. Uh, yeah, no, there's, uh, there's, and I've had a couple of friends that already had it, and their doctor said avoid the UV rays, and it's supposed to what? Yeah, I forget what exactly why why some people. I doesn't matter. I don't care if someone told me that. I would I'd say I'll oh, fuck off. Nothing makes me feel better than being out in the sun. So every day I go out uh, outside. Um, I normally wait till Katrina texts me and says Max and I are playing in the backyard and then I go for a walk in the front yard Mm. and just try and do a nice little half hour walk in the sun and get some sunlight. And I always feel so much better after doing that. Yeah. Same here. What I did was because I miss, you know, obviously I I, I can't, let's see sun, sunlight linked with lower COVID-19 Yeah, That's that's the, that's the, that's the positive side, Doug. I look for the opposite. I would, I would think I would all, I mean, when and where, whenever, but I tell you, I just, I, I did all my research after a doctor told me the opposite. Does it increase your risk of sun of uh, sunburn? Yeah, go, Doug, Google it as if you were trying to find that it's negative. Yeah, so he, he did. He put sunlight and COVID negatives. Oops, I said the I said the name there. Maybe oh. we'll blame. Ah, oh, you blew it. Now they're gonna but, take out the. <clears throat> I have the something show. that I, I Doug I sent over in our in our notes a link. Just it will Justin be able to see this. Probably not. Okay, so Justin, Justin, you have to go to the. You know, I sent it to our ex- the executive uh, one with okay. Jerry. There's a link, and it you're, you'll appreciate this. This is definitely your humor. So we'll satellite this okay. too. Though. I wanted you guys to play this video. Somebody's this. This is a a, a video of uh, what's her name? Cardi B did the WAP song. Oh, right? I saw. Are you going to talk about the, the sign language? Yes. Right, I'm gonna look at it right now. <laughs> I, I gotta. Switch. I don't need to know sign language to know what the hell she's oh talking about. Oh my god, dude! I I I don't know why I oh, I don't yeah, know. I've seen this. I don't know why I found that so funny, dude. I was rolling on the floor when I saw that because it's real, <laughs> right? There's so. Uh, I mean, they use a lot of times uh, these concerts will have somebody doing sign. Have you seen this, Doug? I haven't seen this. Oh, no. play it, play it. Like, yeah, she's like doing this. Look at uh, uh, like, the lady doing. Yeah, sl- the, the poor lady has to like reenact what she's talking <laughs> about with her hands. <laughs> <laughs> I like. Hey, I like when she does the dick suck. Though. Yeah, sign language. <laughs> wow. Uh, I don't know why I find that so funny. It's like look at it right, right here. Yeah. She's like, oh, oh. <laughs> oh my god. Jeez, Louise, that is hilarious. You know what this song is missing oh. is puppets. Yeah, you know, that, that little reenactment. Oh god, dude, that just it, it, that had me just dying because I, I, you know, I think too, like if you're Cardi B's team, like, and you start interviewing like people who do sign language, right? Like, hey, so we're looking for somebody to follow us on tour. We need to do sign language. Is this something that you're capable of doing? And they're like, oh yeah, yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have no idea what you're walking into. <laughs> you're like, oh. now wait, didn't someone do that a while ago? I don't remember where it was, but somebody actually got hired as the sign language interpreter, didn't know sign language. So the whole time they were just making that shit up. That was Mel- Nelson Mandela's yeah, Nelson funeral. Yeah, Nelson Mandela's funeral. <laughs> yeah. What? The guy did not know sign language and he was just making he's, stuff up. He like, faked it the whole time. He was just faking hand what? signals. And yeah, like, that's like, people that's that knew, like, called him out right away. For Nelson Mandela? Yeah. <clears throat> that's fucked yeah. up, that, that was real? Was a big deal. Real deal, yeah. That That's hilarious. I'm pretty sure he did it a couple other times, too. Uh, and just totally faked his way into that job. I, how, yeah, how did you get... I mean, I understand like some random person, but someone of that that caliber, how how did they not because get they vetted? Prob- they probably just trusted him. Like, oh you, oh, you do sign language? That's cool. Like, what do you need to test them? Show me. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? So they probably just trusted him and then he did it. But it was hilarious when you watch... When you watch it, the guy. I mean, what? Okay, so what happens that? Does that person get like jail time for that, or fined, or do they get in trouble? Like, what? Is it just like a big? I don't go to jail. You just, you just probably. I'm sure they didn't pay him. You know. (laughs) I'm sure. I'm sure they didn't pay him. (laughs) Yeah. 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 You're fired. Oh, that's. 
this is a whole it's a whole thing right? yeah we, we'll, we'll skip that for now oh yeah. this, that was a long time december th- uh, d- d- uh, yeah because his, his his memorial was oh, a yeah. while ago dude. oh yeah that was, was years ago yeah hey so yeah, it's funny that that reminds me of this con i just i just read about this they're like you think einstein was smart and you think all these other like newton was smart well this guy uh had basically uh the last few years had had conned this um kentucky fried chicken Uh-oh. saying that he was like you know a quality tester and had free chicken for like the last few years just yeah. like walking into random uh stores yeah i saw that that's what? brilliant oh yeah you saw See, that yeah. L- look at the interpreter that's all that's all fake right there he's just making that shit up right there you know, you know what's funny? As it's I, like the same thing. It's like the same thing. Over. Dude, that's hilarious. Oh, my God. Yeah. Hey, speaking of uh, of uh, funny or whatever, Justin, are you've been waiting for your Felix Grey glasses to come in. Are they coming? What's going on? Yeah, no, I, I'm i still waiting. I, um, I had all this, like, material ready for an awesome commercial, and then it had been so long since we've done a commercial <laughs> for them that, like, I totally forgot about my order, so I have to... I have to recheck on that, but yeah, I I wanted to order a whole new batch uh, because mine are too small. My kids have outgrown the kid size ones, so Ethan now is has been wearing mine and stealing mine constantly, so I don't have them at night. Um, but yeah, I I ordered a, a new new pair of frames, and they have like a whole new section of cool stylish frames. So I was like trying to highlight that, but I totally forget you know, which specific, uh, you know, frames that I ordered. Yeah. Did uh, Adam, did you notice that, did your, the back of your eyes hurt a little bit when the peak of feeling bad, does that happen to you or is it just a headache? Oh, uh, well, I mean, my whole head hurt, bro. Okay. I mean, that was, I had borderline migraines. That's how bad it was. Yeah. So putting, putting on the blue light blocking glasses helped me. I didn't have a bad headache, but I did have it where I, if I looked around, I could feel my eyes. I had it so blank. bad that I like literally buried my head between two pillows and like was squeezing my head. That's mm. how bad it was. Yeah, the headaches were I, out of everything. All the symptoms that I've had, because I've had, I did the like Doug. I had the chills. I have now. I have this like little sore throat thing. Um, I never really. I had a little. I had, I've yeah. coughed maybe ten times. Uh, the headaches were the. Oh, I, I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, was like that. <laughs> that's how he coughs. <laughs> yeah, like a zoo, like a like a, like a Zoolander cough. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how I, I imagine you cough. <laughs> yeah, fuck off, that's guy. Sounds, sound, your cough sounds erotic. <laughs> hey, I did. You know, I, I was still good enough to do meetings and stuff, and I wanted to tell you guys, I had a meeting for. Um, you know, so we're, we've been talking about actually finally marketing the podcast, right? And, and been talking to somebody, friend of ours from Viore. And did you know this? And this continues to fucking sting when I talk about this stuff about HubSpot. Did you know oh, that it's blown up, right? Bro. Well, yeah, you know, we talked about this already, right? That it was 80 something dollars when I told Sal to buy it. And it's like 500 and something. No, I think it's over 600, but yeah. anyway. listen, do you know, do you know, do you know what you want to know? One of their last acquisitions that they didn't even make public the hustle. Yes. Yeah. They bought the, oh, hu- they bought no the, way. they bought the hustle. What a perfect acquisition. Yeah. Think yeah. about that for a second about the power. Their email list is so big. It's massive and still growing. And they all, what they, they yeah. shut all market. All business owners, entrepreneurs <clears throat> follow they, that. That makes a lot of sense. And well, and they shut down all advertising on it too. So my theory is that they're going to use that for all HubSpot people to be able to market it and advertise through. So they'll keep it as like, uh, a, as like an in-house marketing tool. Uh, that'll, that'll smart. Crush. That'll yeah, crush. I know, dude. That company is, um, in my, this is my opinion. I think HubSpot's going to be considered one of the big tech companies in the next five years. That's what I think. I think it'll be up there with Google and Netflix and Apple, just because of what they're doing. And every company is going to need. Yeah, everything's e-commerce now, so yeah. it's it's one of those you know big companies that provides you know the best service for that oh yeah and and they're so good at what they're doing that it's only going to continue to grow which is one of the reasons why their sh- their stock went from when you talked about adam 80 to now 600 i think it's going to be one of those blockbusters well another one that i talked about a long time ago and i'm going to keep repping this and i know i've told you guys both about it is is penn national gaming so penn bought uh last year they bought uh, barstool sports for 450 million which was super. I think I think they got a steal and a half on on Barstool for that, and they just recently acquired the score. I don't know. Justin probably follows the score. Yeah, I follow the score. Uh-huh. Okay, so they just bought the score for two billion dollars. So wow. yeah, what? Yeah, so they're they're like top to bottom, uh, like a like a full on sports betting 
uh, platform now and you have with the power of Barstool and the power of score behind it. So I bought Penn way back when it was, I want to say 30 to $50, somewhere in there. I think they're trending around 70 something. Oh, that's nice. But I'll tell you right now, like, uh, I, I still, I'm going to, I'm going to buy more. I think they're, uh, I think they're still a good buy and, and it's just gambling is there's so much money in gambling. Uh, and I think that's going to be, they're going to be a powerhouse and Barstool sports is doing, all kinds of crazy stuff with what they're getting in their hands and they're starting to like I think this uh this January they have the 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 rights to like one of the bowl games and they're going to actually announce games they're actually going to have their own announcers that will be not only announcing the game but then talking about betting lines while the game is going on and stuff so they're like they're integrating a lot of shit right now in the sports gambling world and I think their forward thinking is is really really smart so there's a there's a Isn't good, it yeah, isn't it crazy now how open that is uh, and non-taboo sports betting? Sports betting used to be such like so looked down upon. Oh yeah, uh, you know, and now it's like you can you can basically bet uh, at at the stadium, like say like Raider Stadium, like I, they they have ways you can like play sports bets like there so oh, it's, it's getting crazy it's getting nuts in fact i was introduced you guys know that obviously i i like to gamble and stuff right so i, I follow this stuff probably a little closer than most of us and um this is the first year that i've ever learned how to do like in-game live betting which i've found really interesting and fun and I'm how like, does that work so that it's a it's a constantly moving line yeah. All right. Yeah. So based on how the game is progressing, yeah. So th everyone's there's always been uh, you know lines that you can bet on um, and before the game starts. And in the past, that was kind of the traditional way to bet. But now, because especially like a sport like basketball, where there's so many swings back and forth, so I, I've actually gotten pretty good. Or at, in, obviously the season's over for NBA, but uh, during the game, I follow. I watch every Warrior game, so I feel pretty good about knowing runs and when we're what we some of the tendencies that we do so i would wait i did really well this year on this i would wait for a game where let's say we're supposed to win but we just had a really rough first and second quarter and we're down like 15 it'll dramatically swing the betting lines way different than how the bet opened up and so a lot of times i'd wait for that and then but i mean there's so many things they're allowing you to to bet on while in game that and it's i mean Obviously, there's a lot of people that uh, are addicted to gambling, just like they are with anything else. And so, oh can, yeah, you know, I'm not advocating you know gambling to anybody because I know that's a it's a real serious issue for some people. And I have friends, and I've watched even myself get sucked in like this, where you you're not even really watching the game anymore. You're oh, so into the. I have a buddy who mortgaged his mom's yeah. house. <clears throat> yeah, literally mortgaged oh, his, own, his own mom's house. No, I've had yeah. but I've I've watched some. I've watched really close. I, I guess I've been lucky that like for in that sense where I've had a couple friends both with. Uh, different types of drugs that I've been around and then also gambling that I've watched like completely like lose their life. And they're like really mm. close friends of mine. And because of that, it's made me more self-aware of my own behaviors. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, I, I can, you so can just I, stop yourself before it happens. Yeah. Yeah. I catch, I like, I get, I have rules, right? Like, okay, I'll, I'll allow myself to do this, but you real easily, you can get sucked into it. But oh, anyways, yeah, totally. I just, at the point of bringing that up was just to uh, enlighten the audience on the things that if yeah. you don't know what Penn national in the, the ticker is P E N N. Um, I've been following them for a while, and even before they bought yeah, Barstool. Speaking of big companies, you guys see what uh, okay. Apple announced? Hmm. They're going to start. No. They're going to start scanning the pictures. Oh, I heard this. on your phone for child abuse photos. So what the fuck? Yeah. So they're, and I don't know how they're going to use do this. I don't know if it's like some kind. It's obviously not a person. I'm sure it's some kind of technology that's going to go through. Of course not. Scan people's pictures. Dude, that sounds super invasive. I mean, obviously we don't want child abuse, but how are they going to work through all that? Yeah, you got pretty legally? defensive pretty quick right yeah. there. <laughs> I mean, whoa! <laughs> I got a lot of clean up to do. <laughs> like, yeah. Justin's like, what uh, exactly yeah. would constitute a beating your child picture? <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> it's... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> it's it's uh it's it, 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 okay so again this is a, it sounds like a good thing but you're letting them in there to do something like that and what else will they start to you know look, I don't know what, what can they do and also this technology is often like I experience on Instagram when shit gets taken down 
for you know, I've had things taken down where it says that this is your this is advocating for you know bodily harm, and the meme is nothing to do with that. But obviously, the algorithm interpreted it a particular way because it has to follow a, a structure. So I'm wondering how many mistakes they're going to make. Is or? this a is it, I mean. I don't know. This is a stupid question, but is it like is it common practice for child beaters to take photos of beating their children? Um, well, it's not just that. It's also, I'm sure, any kind of child abuse, child pornography, or child endangerment, that kind of stuff. Wow. But <clears throat> nonetheless, um, and how are you gonna? Okay, how is the algorithm gonna pick up the difference between that and me videoing my son playing naked in the bathtub? I don't know. That's a good question. That's I, I don't know I don't know and this is so it's so well weird. and them going through that and looking at that right like, right like on. I I don't post that shit because I don't want anyone else to see it but I like I have that for myself yeah. it's my son yeah. it's a memory that I'm gonna have forever so well I, and you're right there's an apple because here's what'll probably happen it'll get flagged by the out by their computer system right, right. or whatever then the next filter is a person. So then they're going to look at these photos and be like, oh, no, no, that's just a, you know, his kid in the well, bathroom. I want to screen those people that are looking at it. That's Bing what I want to do. Bingo, because yeah. where do they find a lot of these? Yeah, pedophiles. Yeah, these yeah. sickos. Where do they find them? Yeah. They work at Disneyland. They work in schools. They work in daycares. Why? Because they, they're they attracted to places where they can get access to kids and stuff. So it's like, you know, who's going to filter that out? Where, is, where's the push for the pedophile passport? That's what I want to know. Oh yeah, no, that's that's not that's against uh, their liberty, Justin. So we can't, oh, we can't right. do that yeah. for them. Oh, whoops. Yeah, whoops. But, yeah. Well, I told you guys that before, though. Like, if you're on Megan's Law, you can't fly anywhere. You can't go out of state, or you can't go out of country. Is that true? So, yeah, that's true. I'm, you can't go oh, out. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you're on Megan's okay, Law, you can't yeah. you can't fly out of the country. Mm. Yeah, you can't you can you can fly state to state. But Have you, you guys fly. ever gone on there to see how many uh -huh. registered people there are? around your neighborhood uh -huh. I, unfortunately yeah I, just just I, once and i was like yikes they're everywhere well i think justin yeah. worked for me when i had uh one of my trainers yeah. dad popped up whoa we were like sitting, yeah i believe justin when well, you were there weren't you there with me i was there we yeah, both yeah. found it at the same yeah, time we were, and we're like no i didn't even know what megan this is when i first found out what megan's law was Never even heard of it up at, up until this point. So I'm like 20. I want to say I'm like 25 ish or so, something like that. We're working at the Santa Teresa Club, um, and uh, we just, I just thought it would be like, oh, let's check this out. Let's see how many people are on here in the neighborhood, not too far from here. And we're looking it up, and my trainer's dad, who I know really well at the time, uh, pops so up. So his on face that. and everything. Oh yeah, right away. Now I never like it. Never came up, but this uh, I really like his dad and I was really close to him too and just don't you guys showered together hung out <laughs> yeah, the whole deal yeah, yeah, just super nice to everything you. was normal I didn't understand <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying like he asked me first <laughs> no I was oh man I, I, I have uh, and to this day I still don't know but now I know other people that are also close to me that have been put on there for like you know she was 17 and he was 20 or, or like 20. peeing yeah. at, at a yeah, elementary so, school yeah or, or yeah if you're at midnight walking in a park and you decide to pull out and piss on a tree and there happens Which to be a cop it's crazy like you know they got to kind of differentiate that cuz like that's, come on I, that's, I, think, I think they have though i think that no. now they're starting to pass. i think they are trying to i think they're oh, starting to, I yeah I, I hope they're trying to cuz that's messed up yeah yeah cuz I, I i happen to know uh, at least one case that is really unfortunate for somebody who made a mistake when he was younger and it wasn't but puts him on there and they don't tell you the difference between that guy and the guy who actually is mo molested yeah. three children like it's like damn that's fucking that's rough to get thrown in that same category for potentially being 19 and sleeping with a 17 year old or being dumb a dumb drunk 22 year old kid and pulling your dick out at a park at midnight and peeing yep. because you're drunk you know like those yeah. are like those are like some. I I've mean, peed in a lot of garages. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what? what? I don't want to be on that list. What? Why garages? <laughs> yeah, what's, what the hell's wrong? I, I don't know. You just you know you can hide in the corner and. Uh, that sounds know, very dark. very pedo to me, dude. That's, 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 <laughs> that's, <laughs> maybe you should see and keep you. Nothing pedo about it. Just yeah. peeing because I drank, you know. Hey, I can't believe you did. I I was expecting when I saw everybody's notes for the show today that you would have the uh, the turtle news. No, you didn't. No, you didn't get the turtle news. What turtle news? Was uh, it that that huge turtle that got? Yes, I knew you would know. 
Yeah, dude. No, the, oh, I saw that. There was, was the thing was massive. It was like a dinosaur. Nine hundred kilos. What? What is this? Tell, explain this to me. A turtle that washed up on shore in Spain. Pull it up, Doug. So that's, like two, that's like it, two thousand. It pound looks turtle. fake because it's so big. Yes. Like, I didn't even. I, I can't even believe it. I didn't even know they can get this big. Think about that for a second. Yeah. That can eat you. It's oh, bro. Yes. It's over seven feet long. Oh. And. Over 900 kilos. Wow. For sure, I'd want to ride that in the water. I was just going to say. Majestically. I was just going to say, imagine. You know what I mean? Put a harness on it. The I mean, you, I mean, ocean. think about that for a second. Seven feet, which means it, it's every bit from me to Justin right now. And could you imagine seeing that in the in the water? Hell no. That's why I don't go in the water like that. You guys know that. <laughs> Hell no. Oh my there's, god. Dude, there's some there's some monsters still out there. That's not I'll that's not the, those aren't it, Doug. It was you go to do Spain, nine hundred just do nine hundred kilogram just do he turtle did. Spain. No, he didn't. He didn't the weight of a turtle. No, I did not. <laughs> huh? There it is right there. See it getting pulled out in the Oh the, wow, look at that thing. Oh yeah. my it's a there's a tractor picking it up. It's yeah. so big. Holy yeah. Toledo. Look at that thing. That's a lot of soup. <laughs> wow. hey, look like Donatello, huh? Yeah, uh, no? they caught Donatello. No? No. That thing's more like a Raphael. That oh. thing is. I wonder how old it was, right? Because to get that big, it had to live. How long do they live? Long. Do they're, they? Yeah, they're very old. Yeah, really. Two hundred years old. Oh, like, was it like one hundred fifty years or something? Yeah, one hundred fifty. Really? Two hundred? Uh huh. Really? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yep. Now is that uh, not as old as sharks? Sharks live. Much <clears throat> yeah, I know. Longer. I know sharks get like five hundred, right? Well, they found that one shark that I think that was almost five hundred years old. Which is really weird. Right, right. So I didn't know Crazy. that. Now, it, it, obviously different types of turtles because your little turtle that you used to get when you were a kid that stays in your little you know, aquarium at yeah, home. Yeah, little box turtle. Or whatever. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mikey doesn't live much longer than like four or five years, I thought. I don't know. Doug, look up uh, oldest turtle I tell turtle you, my turtle ever. ran away. Uh, How yeah. the, hey, that's the pretty, irony, they're so right? fast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's totally that's pretty dead. pathetic, Justin. It took him five weeks. Well, I, it <laughs> is. It, it crawled its way out, and then I, I thought, oh man, it must have got eaten by something out here. But we found it when we drove back like a mile away. Really? The, the thing was on a mission. Wow. Uh, and so, whatever. I, I ended up just letting it go. I'm like, you want to get out of here? You go. Dude, yeah, my cousin live your life. That my, was good of you because that'd be fucked up. Guy's been on the run for seven days and then he, and he gets, <laughs> he's right down the street. Imagine, like, imagine him. He, he's a freedom turtle, dude. I was like, I respect that. Yeah, yeah. my my, uh, my cousin had uh, two turtles. He, for whatever reason, loved them, right? It was like his favorite things or whatever. They got out of the tank. He kept them in, in the patio in the backyard. Got out of the tank, couldn't find them. He was like so sad. This is when we were kids. He was like, I don't know, must have been 11. He was such a sad story. And he's like, oh, man, I can't find my turtles. This totally sucks. Anyways, goes to mow the lawn. And, oh, he mowed his turtle. Oh, he's, oh, hey, hey turtle riddle. soup. He's mowing the lawn. And then all of a sudden, pam, 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 pam. He's, oh. like, yeah, he's like, oh, crap. What is that? <laughs> no, dude. Turtles. Ran them right wow. on. Over 150 years. Yeah, that's uh, Jonathan. Is that John? Oh, Galapagos you- tortoises are noted to live over 150. But an Aldebra giant tortoise named Atwita. Now, do you guys bl- do you believe when we, we have sharks and we have turtles that are living this long that we are going to figure out something in their DNA code and stuff of like that and be able to give it to ourselves so we live that long? Uh, I do. Yeah, I mean, man. I mean, we've I taken too. bioluminescence from other animals. I think so, too. made our skin glow and crazy shit. That's so why I feel like I feel like if there's out. I feel like uh, at one point... Jellyfish. you got to look at jellyfish. I think they can live forever, if I'm not mistaken, right? Don't yeah. jellyfish live until the, they, they die I from had something? I have to ask you guys, though, what... I mean, do you know how to determine the the gender of a, a turtle uh, by his winky? Don't, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. don't you look I have at no his winky to this day? Because we thought for sure ours was a boy, so we called him like Abraham, like Abraham Lincoln. And uh, turns out it laid eggs, and they were like, "Okay, uh, I no. guess you're a bet now." Yeah. I, you know, I, I don't know. Did you know? I, right. Random fact for you, since you're bringing this up, did you know that the original Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were pulled off the shelf because they put tails on them and they look like little penises? I did not know that. Yeah, yeah. When they first made the first, the well, they're first, not supposed to be in the front. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. What, yeah so, what no, was that all about? They, well, they, they so imagine them. They, they obviously the because they're standing. They're standing and then they're standing, and it it kind of look. You can see through his legs. Yes. Which yep. one was your uh, favorite? Which one was your favorite? Donatello. Ninja? Really? Mm-hmm. You like Michael Donatello? Mm-hmm. I was a Donatello also. Yeah, yeah. Now, he, he was because he read and he had a bow. 
I like that. Did you? Mm-hmm. Wow. I thought you would have said Leonardo. I liked uh, I liked Donatello too, but that's because when I played Ninja Turtles Raphael on- Raphael is cool but rude. <coughs> on Michelangelo the, is a party, dude. Dude, you- Dude, Michelangelo all day. I remember that song. Wow, that yeah. really brings me back. Um, I re- the video game on uh, Nintendo, remember the Ninja Turtles? Donatello had the long his his was the longest reach and so that's why he was the best. That's the one I that's uh, why I liked him. I <laughs> that might have been why I liked him. Too. You remember that? They had the van. Yeah, they yeah. drove up in the van and yeah. they came out and you just They actually thought that that, that was yeah, that, that was cool. They yeah. thought that toy would flop and ended up being like go down in history as like one of the most sold toys ever. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That's insane. <laughs> I, speaking of sales, uh probably it's got to rank as one of our number one most repurchased sponsor in terms of when people buy their product. They keep buying more because I constantly get DMs from people about Magic Spoon. Oh, yeah. People love Magic Spoon. That's got to be the one that I, it, do you get messages on anything else as much as that. No, no, we get tagged <clears> on that <throat> more than anything else, and it's been one of our best partners for sure. I'm actually really surprised, and I I ought to ask it. Put it in, maybe Doug put it in a note to ask Jerry next time I'm talking to them. I'm really curious why they're not in stores yet. I mean, they got they have to be huge. Yeah. That's a big step, right? To do that, to go from direct to consumer to straight to store. Well, I just think it. You well, know, you'd think like a Whole Foods or something that's, you know, uh, would right. be promoting it. It'd be a perfect fit. Right. I totally thought like a Whole Foods would have them. So I'm I'm curious to why they're not in there. I imagine it's better business for them uh, as far as. I'm sure the margins are way better, right? Direct to consumer. Yeah. So for, yeah. for that reason. But I, you would think for just exposure, it, it would be ideal for them to get into like a whole foods even if they were to eat it a little bit on the margins i, I th- would think yeah but i don't know maybe they're they're crushing the dc model so well that they don't they don't want to do the whole brick and mortar thing because i don't know anywhere I think it's a matter of time <clears throat> have you heard anybody say that they've been they've they've carried them anywhere i know i i've never seen them anywhere i've either. never seen them anywhere other than going online and yeah yeah them. the only the only knock i ever get about it is the price point and i always find myself having to explain to people like what you're paying for protein's you're, expensive i know you you just if you break down the amount of protein that if find me, me any meal that has that many grams of protein that isn't that expensive. Yep. It's just that's what you're paying for. It's the same thing when I make the argument with people that oh I found this protein powder for fifty percent less than the one you gave me. Yeah, I know it has fifty percent less of protein in it too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Duh. Yep. Yep. No. <laughs> well, it's been saving me as of late, dude. I I don't know if I told you guys, but we've had to kind of show our house. We're trying to sell our house, and we actually just got an offer and sold it but uh like our house is basically just like bare bones like nothing's in here so there's no food in here there's not like so we just got back from uh palm desert and there's like nothing in the house and and i was just rummaging through eating like crackers and, and stupid shit that like you know it's in boxes but i was like oh magic spoon thank god <laughs> and uh it saved me <laughs> like, at least had something of with some protein i could i could grab so that's been good hey so you guys you guys officially accepted the offer yeah, so yeah, it was it was a really quick experience. I guess this market is like that, right? It's this is crazy. a crazy market. This so, is a crazy yeah, market. Yeah, so now we're in we're in this whirlwind of like uh I guess we're waiting <laughs> so we can move. It's going to be a while, but I mean, okay, so um, what's that what's what's that well, one? Obviously, I I'm sure you don't want to put your personal numbers of that which I don't want you to do on 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 the show. But did yeah. you did you get asking or over or under? Uh, so I actually got, uh, a little bit over, but, um, I was, I was hoping for a little bit more just cause I'm greedy, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, like on top of that, like I, I just, I was like, you know what? I just want to, I just want to be done and be clean with it whatever. So I basically put out there too, like as is like, cause there was, there was just some things that needed to be fixed mm. still. And like, I was like debating on paying to get it done, doing it myself, all that. And I was like, well, Let's just see, because I could, I might still be able to get a good offer, and I threw that as is sort of one more thing for them to consider, and they totally were like, "Yeah, fine, we'll take it as is." Mm. Oh, bro! And so so you got so you like, got right. over and no contingencies. That's a and no contingencies. yeah, that's yeah. a win. So you don't have to take so down the like, cool. yeah. you don't have to yeah. take down the sex torture chamber anymore. Then just leave it up. <laughs> yeah. as no, they is. have to live with it. Yeah. They have to live with it. <laughs> use it. And display it. So what's so. Uh, okay? So n- now that's happening because you were waiting for that to move into the other place. The other place is officially yours too. Also, are you done with that? Yeah. So we just wait to close on that uh, at the end of this month. So like twenty six, twenty seven. So we're gonna wait for that. Were you able um, to uh, go through our girl Amanda, or do you have to go somewhere else? 
she did come through. She, uh, did. she, good did. Girl. she had to get creative, but uh, yeah, she's a champion. So yeah, oh, okay. we're, we're able to work things out. And um, How yeah, excited are you, dude? Oh, I'm really excited. Isn't your uh, your mean, square footage is like five uh, xing almost? Isn't it? <laughs> it's, it's, like... it's yeah. I mean, it's, it's finally gonna have some space. Let's just put it that way. I've been living eleven years in really tight quarters, which has been great. But uh, you know, our between dogs and kids growing bigger and uh, needing their own space, it's just you know, it's the inevitable process of uh, growing. So who's who's most excited of the family? Uh, probably Courtney. So yeah, yeah. She's well because, dude, like 2020 and like trying to manage the kids in their school and you know, staying home and not really seeing the light of day. It's like uh, we live in, in beautiful redwoods, but it's really dark. Uh, and so that sort of eats at you after a while. And this place, the new place, is like lots of sun exposure, there's like fruit trees and all kinds of cool stuff that uh, you know, she's looking forward to. So I'm yeah. excited. Congratulations, yeah. man. Yeah, very, very cool. Right on. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, I hope you're enjoying this podcast. Head over to our partners, masszymes.com forward slash mind pump. That's M A S S Z Y M E S dot com forward slash mind pump. They sell some of the best digestive enzymes you'll find anywhere. Now, why would you want to take digestive enzymes? Well, it helps you assimilate and utilize the proteins, fats, and carbohydrates that you eat more effectively. Get it to your muscles. Improve your digestion so it helps with things like bloating or maybe even constipation. Um, it basically makes your food more effective, especially if you eat a high protein diet. I love their products. I use them to help with my digestion, and I definitely notice a difference. Just don't forget to use the code MindPump10. That's MindPump10 with no space for a discount. First question is from Alfonso Morning. Should I take creatine if I'm trying to lose weight? Yes, you should. Creatine, because creatine promotes muscle building, right? And it does so through a few different mechanisms. One is through the, the replenishing of the ATP. ATP is in muscle energy that's responsible for strength. When there's more ATP, you're going to be a little stronger. That sends a louder muscle building signal. It also <clears throat> volumizes, it's called cell volumization, right? Volumizes the cells and muscle because it, it attracts more water. So this isn't bloat. So it's not like you're bloated where there's water outside the muscle, but rather the muscle itself has more fluid within it. That also stimulates a little bit of muscle growth. It speeds up recovery, so your body recovers a little faster. And then indirectly from this, it'll help with fat loss because as we've talked about on the podcast uh, you know, at least a million times, building muscle is a, a very effective way to burn body fat through the metabolism boosting effects. And, and, and by the way, you, anytime you're, you're, whether you're lose, trying to lose weight, trying to gain weight, doesn't matter, your goal should be to build muscle because building muscle, of course, contributes to weight gain, right? So you're trying to get bigger. You want to build muscle. Obviously, that's easy. But even if you're getting leaner, you still want to do things to try to build muscle. Now, you might not build muscle because it's hard to build muscle while you're getting leaner. But at the very least, you minimize any muscle loss, which tends to be inevitable with a cut. So creatine, at the very least, especially if you're advanced, will prevent some of the muscle loss that's almost inevitable to happen yeah. when you're on a cut. I, I think this comes from the the fear of the water retention still. I was actually just talking oh, yeah. to uh, a listener of ours who's also getting ready for a show right now. She's In fact, she's in peak week right now, and she was like asking me questions about uh, the information that her coach was giving her, and her coach was uh, pulled her off of creatine the the final two weeks mm -hmm. and I said to her why he was oh he he wants to cut back on the water retention I said well it holds water in your muscle bellies you you want that like that's a that's advantageous when you right. go on stage you want to be filled. it's ideal for performance yeah yeah ideal for performance ideal and also looks. for looks yeah you and know looks. Yeah, yeah you want you want to hold the water in your muscle bellies and his uh, argument back to her was that. The it it does not uh, you, your body doesn't dictate where it's going to hold water. It holds water everywhere. Not that's not how it works. I know. So I said it's absolutely the opposite of it. You in fact you taking creatine will help ensure that the water is being held right. in your muscle bellies versus it being subcutaneously held. So uh, that's I think that if and then you're talking about somebody who's helping uh, competitors, coaching lots of people, and people are looking up to for information. So there's still yeah. this idea that. 
creatine bloats and holds water in your body and it does but in the muscle bellies and that is something that you want it's the same thing that uh, i used to think it's ridiculous when you'd see the amount of water that these competitors would cut now i reduced my water intake but i would not cut it completely because I wouldn't want to have what they call the flat look when I get up on stage. I want my muscle bellies full of water and, and carbohydrates. And so the idea was to deplete leading into it and then load with some water and carbohydrates so it fills that well, up. Didn't you even increase your water intake substantially so that way you could kind of bring it back to baseline going into peak? That's exact, I did this exact same thing with sodium. So I, I for most of my uh, prep... I would sodium load and water load so my body would get used to my and I'd get all the way up to three gallons a day. So I was drinking three gallons a day. I don't remember the exact milligrams, but I was doing at least two, three X the amount of sodium that was normal for me. I was adding like two big old dill pickles a day and then salting a lot of my food and stuff. So I was doing that all the way. And then what I all I did when I got to peak week was I, I pulled back on it. So I didn't cut sodium. I just went from doing two to you three You went from X. excessive to normal. Yes, because you still want that. And, and yeah. by the way, this is information that Adam is sharing. For most of you listening and watching, Doesn't it, this is not important for you. Right. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. I, I know people, and this this yeah. part annoys the hell out of me, people be like, oh, I'm going to go to the beach uh, you know, on Friday. Should I you know, watch my sodium and my water on take? That only matters if you're shredded. Like You have to be really, really lean. Yeah. Like single yeah. single digit body fat percentage, then it matters. But if you're just lean, or if you're not lean, it makes no difference. And so, watching your sodium intake and manipulating your water in order to look better at the beach, waste of time. And, and the same thing goes for this creatine question. Yes. If you are afraid yeah. of holding a little bit of extra water, uh, but your goal is to lean out and build muscle. Uh, creatine is a great idea. Yeah, um, and again, think of it this way. This is a good example, right? Imagine a balloon, right? If I blow a balloon up with air, it looks fuller and tighter. If I let the air out, it gets flabbier and squishier, right? That's what happens with the water that creatine attracts within the muscle. So it'll make your muscles appear fuller, rounder, uh, more developed. It's not the same as bloat. Bloat is outside of the muscle, under the skin, um, which looks totally different. It's not the same whatsoever. And so, and, and here's the problem. You keep putting in people's heads, creatine will make you bloated. Creatine, and then you get a girl, especially a female, that's what they worry about, right? Then they take creatine and they see the scale go up a pound or two, which right. will happen, yeah. right? If you take creatine, you'll probably go up on the scale by about a pound or two, but it's not... Again, it's not bloat, it's not body fat, it's intracellular fluid in the muscle. But they were, then they see that and they freak out. Oh my God, I, you're right, I'm bloated. I'm not going to, let's stop taking this. No, creatine is, of all the supplements that exist, all the non-hormonal supplements, in other words, all the supplements that are not anabolic steroids, it's the, by far, there's nothing that comes close to as effective, uh, the, the effects that creatine has on body composition, building muscle, burning body fat, improving performance. It has health benefits. It's good for the heart. Uh, it's good for the brain. So it's it's a supplement that I pretty much recommend to anybody to take. You don't have to take it, by the way. It's still a supplement, so it's not as important as food and all that stuff. But it's one of those supplements that everybody could probably benefit from with very small exceptions, right? People with kidney disease or some people just their gut doesn't respond well to it. But aside from that, it's a great supplement to take, whether you're cutting or gaining. Next question is from Wampi Uirado. What are the most undervalued exercises? Oh, exercises that are undervalued. You know what? I, I see mm. more people doing this now. Did we do an episode on this? I think we did. I yeah. was say, if not, we should. That's a, that's a cool- A while back, yeah. Yeah, I mean- We should I, link to it, right? I, I, yeah, if we did. I, I thought we did. I don't remember. Maybe you can look, Doug, but I do think that's a cool conversation because- um, there's some exercises in the in the strength community that uh, that people shit on all the time, and I I think they are in the undervalued. Yeah, and you know you see them fall in and out of favor. Here's one that now I'm seeing people do that when we first started the podcast about six six and a half years ago, nobody did uh, sissy squats. Nobody did sissy oh, yeah. squats. Now this was a staple leg exercise in the 50s, 60s, 70s. 
somewhat in the 80s, then leg extension machines got real popular and everybody stopped doing them. When we started talking about sissy squats did on the you, podcast. Did you hear that? Sorry to interrupt you, but you, you just sparked something I got to ask you. I've been meaning to ask you. Did you watch the episode that uh, Mark Bell did with the biomechanic expert? Yeah, I saw that. Well, it, I didn't. I'm not. I'm not. You're bringing, not. The, I'm not bringing up the chest thing that I don't agree with. But he talked about sissy squats and comparing the way it uh, would actually loads loads. the quad. Yeah, I know. But you know what the problem with that is? Is is you try to do this kind of one to one math with mechanical load to a specific muscle. Sometimes, and we haven't yet explained why some exercises build more muscle than others. Like a deadlift is going to build you're more back than like a cable straight arm pull down. Now I'm pretty sure a cable straight arm pull down is going to add more direct mechanical load to a, the lats, but I'm not going to argue that it's going to build bigger lats than a heavy deadlift. Well, I think the, the case that we try to argue and, or think that it is, it's CNS related, right? Cause if you, uh, you, if you compare a sissy squat to like a back loaded barbell squat, you might be able to make the argument, as this biomechanic expert did, that it the sissy squat technically loads the quads uh, more, but you can't you cannot do a, a, a sissy squat nowhere near the amount of weight that you can load a right. barbell back squat, which the CNS adaptation. Isn't that the same argument as the the barbell hip thrust versus squat? Yeah, uh, similar. Yeah, I know what you're somewhat. Talking. Yeah, similar. Yeah. So you know, back to the the original question: sissy squats fell out of favor. You're seeing people do them now, which is cool. It's a great exercise, great quad exercise. Here's another one that I see people do more now that people didn't do for a long time. I would get funny looks when I would do this in the gym. The dumbbell pullover. I think a dumbbell pullover is so undervalued. Find me an exercise that moves resistance in that direction. It's very few, right? Very few movements actually take a weight from almost behind you to in front of you in this pullover motion. That was a staple exercise back in the day. In fact, bodybuilders in the 50s and 60s would brag about how much they could do a pullover. I, I think it's important though. You, you, you're just you're starting to throw out everything and leave nothing for Justin and I. But you got to you got to talk about no. There definitely is because I I would throw Turkish yeah, naturally right uh, <laughs> Turkish get up and the windmill in there. But I think we should uh -huh. more more importantly. Why do we think they're so undervalued? Like this. Why I think the sissy squat is so amazing is one. The, you have to be able to uh, hip hinge really well. You have to squeeze your glutes and keep them activated in that position. You mean you have to lock them, not yeah. hip hinge, right? Yeah, right. excuse me. Lock your lock your hips in place. You have to also have good ankle mobility and stability and control in order to do them. So I think yeah. it, it promotes a, a, a lot of a lot of good things. The wind or the, your uh, dumbbell pullover you're talking about, such an, a fundamental thing you should be able to do. We should be able to have something yep. from above or behind our head and come forward. I mean, that is something that we've evolved to be able to do. Oh, yeah. We, we throw. Right. We throw with accuracy. That's an overhand you know, kind of motion. Yet, how many clients have you guys seen or assessed that have lost that That's ability true. to do that? So oh, I, yeah. I think not to it's yes, it's a great uh, lat loading exercise that a lot of people don't do. And I, and I think you see great results from it from a muscle building perspective, but just a functional perspective, both those exercises, I think are good fundamental movements that your body should be capable to do. And a lot of people can't do it. And so instead of not doing it, you should work towards the ability mm -hmm. to do it. And that, I think the same thing goes for the Turkish get up. And I think the yeah. same thing goes for a windmill. These are these are not. We're not going to compare it to some other exercise and say it's going to build way more muscle or it burns way more body fat. But those exercises are are fundamental movements that your body should be capable and not just capable but good at. You mm -hmm. want to get good at it. And if you can't do those movements, it's a really good goal to work on those. And I think they have tremendous carryover into all other pursuits in the gym. Totally. Yeah, I think too that some exercises fall out of favor because a lot of people don't have the prerequisites and the mobility to kind of pull them off. Uh, but then they just get thrown to the wayside, even though there's lots of muscle building potential and value from those exercises. Like, for instance, like, uh, you know, behind the neck pulls or behind the neck press. Yes. Uh, something that we would. Uh, completely uh, voice against as we're going through our certifications and we're thinking about safety and, and the overall 
uh, general population probably can't pull a lot of these types of exercises off, but can it be a goal to be able to have that type of control and stability and mobility uh, to then be able to perform something like that, which then would uh, stimulate uh, your muscles in a completely new way, uh, which then provides a whole new opportunity to build muscle. Yeah, it's and you know what's funny about that, Justin? If you look at bodybuilding routines of the late 80s all the way up to the late 90s, all of them included a behind-the-neck pull-down or a behind-the-neck pull-up or a behind-the-neck shoulder press. All of them. In fact, bodybuilders almost exclusively yeah. did behind-the-neck uh, 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 presses. You know what would be really fun is actually to create yep. a program that is based around all these undervalued and unconventional movements. Mm. Like, that's the whole thing. It's written around nothing but all these... It like, would be cool to do it by decade. So, like, <laughs> yeah. a bodybuilding routine from the 70s, 80s, and 90s off of what was popular of those times. Yeah, I just think that there's... Uh, I think the first thing is getting people to understand that there are, there are great movements and then the, probably the next challenge that people will have because they are unique is how to program it. So mm -hmm. I think that putting together a program that is primarily, obviously it'd be almost impossible to do a full routine that doesn't have some sort of, uh, you know, standard movements that people are familiar with. But I think we could write a program with a bulk of these unconventional uh, exercises. Yeah. And, and again, you have to, especially when it comes to the physique and muscle building world, they tend to follow what the winners and champions are doing. And then that becomes a trend. So like, I, I remember when Dorian Yates was Mr. Olympia, all of a sudden, everybody was doing supinated grip barbell rows, right? Uh, that, that's because he did them and he would won and he had these, these big muscular back. In the 90s, no bodybuilders did barbell squats either. Everybody did leg presses. You're starting to see more do barbell squats now. Why? Because you're seeing like the, uh, the Olympia physique champion. What's his name? I, I can't remember his name. He does heavy barbell squats and he's got these he's developing like these incredible legs. He also does deadlifts. What are bodybuilders now starting to do again? Deadlifts. So that's what you got to pay attention to. If you want to find exercises that are undervalued, just look and see what people did 20, 30, 40 years ago that they loved back in those days. And then you'll find some value and you'll see like, oh, wait a minute. You know, and again, I said dumbbell pullovers. That was a staple exercise. To this day, I do them uh, at least weekly. And I love the way that they develop my body. Next question is from Nick Folkman. As a personal trainer, how do you make workouts fun while continuing to stay on track with your program to accomplish your goals? All right. So I, I fell into this trap as an early trainer. Yeah. If you are trying to make your workouts fun for your clients, you are screwed. Yeah. Because there's only so much you can do. <laughs> there's only so yep. there's only so many things you can mix up. And if you plan on training clients consistently for a while, after about a year, you're going to end up, you, you know what you'll end up doing? You'll end up doing this. You'll end up doing like lunge to curl, to press, to yeah. twist, to stand on the ball, to weird shit that doesn't do anything because you run out of ideas. Here's how you keep people having fun and engaged. And I think this is one- You have a personality. Thank you. That's how you do it. <laughs> Thank you. I, this is very important for personal trainers. If you want to be successful, and when I say successful, I don't mean just monetarily. I also mean that, but not just that. I mean successful in terms of getting your clients good results. Develop your personal skills. My clients often came to work out with me and they did the same shit. Often squats, deadlifts, presses, you know, rows, right? We would do lots of variations of those exercises, but usually the same stuff. Why did they keep coming? They enjoyed being with me. That was one of the main reasons, right? So I made it fun and enjoyable by being personable, by having good conversation, by making them feel welcome. That's what you focus on. Not making the workouts fun and exciting and different because that's a trap, I promise you. Yeah, well, your job as a trainer is to convince them that our goal is, is <clears throat> not to design a fun workout, but an effective workout. So, I mean, if yes. I had a client that was, this is no fun, I'd say that, well, you know, if you want, I can write a really fun routine, but did you want a routine that's going to get you more results or would you rather have less results and have more fun? Totally up to you. So I'd alternate advance them like that. So if you feel the pressure to make a fun because at the same day we're we're in the the um you know customer service business yep. right so mm -hmm. you know you are, they are paying for a service they they do have the right to say that hey adam I, I i want it to be like this although they're hiring a professional so i would tell them i just be very direct say well yeah we could do some really fun games and we could play around for an hour and burn some calories and you know we'll build a little bit of muscle along the way um, or we could do the things that are most effective and it gets you to your goals faster. It's totally up to you. And I would put it well, right. Well, I think, 
I think too that um, you, you know initially. I mean, this is something I struggled with too because I know that um, that's something you you want to think about client retention and and think about what their interests are. Uh, but something to really break up the monotony was just kind of phasing uh, the workout routine. So you kind of would introduce something new. Uh, so maybe we worked on something very specifically that was different than, than we had been working on uh, to change it up, keep it fresh. It depends on how long I've had the client because we definitely have to establish that foundational baseline uh, that uh, will provide the results. But then we can get creative in learning like a new skill where uh, I'm teaching them you know, some kind of uh, unconventional technique that, uh, you know, it's hard for them to work on. But meanwhile, we're still maintaining that baseline of strength and, and focusing on that in our programming. Uh, but still, I, I, I had to learn how to not uh, do the razzle dazzle, you know, uh, variations of lunges and all that kind of nonsense. That it's a total trap. No, trainers. that's a, that's a really good point, Justin. You actually just reminded me. You just took me back to some of the things that I would do because we, we were all challenged by this. Okay, and we were all guilty of falling in the trap of writing fun routines. I guarantee mm -hmm. that all of us went through a phase of being a pretty bad trainer, but good at writing fun ex exercise yeah, routines, new stuff every time. Yeah. And then I think I, land oh, yeah. then I think when I landed somewhere in the middle is it was similar to kind of what Justin, I think is alluding to right now, where I would pick like a, something that was challenging. And they were, they were fun. There was ones where I'd, you know, stack plates on their thighs, or I'd make them do like a plank for a long time or do one of these crazy step up to a balanced toe touch thing. But it'd be one thing that we would do like at the end of the workout that I would want them to improve on, right? I'd teach or I'd teach them something that re required a lot of mobility or strength to do or they've never done before. Right. And then the goal was to get better at that one thing. Right. And I would, at the end of every workout, that was kind of how we finished it off. Like, okay, let's go do your wall sit and let's see if we can increase the time. Or, hey, let's go over and do that balancing thing that I had you doing. So, so they had this cool thing to look forward to at the end of the workout and it was fun and it was challenging. And so, but it also wasn't dictating what my, where the real programming was, right? It was like the icing on the cake type of deal. It was like the real, the real cake, the real meat of the, the training program was everything I did at the beginning. And then at the very end of the workout, they could have this kind of fun thing to do. Do you remember trainers that worked for you that just never got out of that trap of always trying to make it fun? A, for the a lot of them. And you know, yeah. and, and so here's the experience I had with these trainers is they would always run into the same problems. They would burn clients out or the clients would get injured and they actually would shoot themselves in the foot and would have a high turnover because every time the client showed up, it had to be the funnest workout they ever had. It had to be hyped and excitement. And it's like, there's, that can only last so long. At some point, your client gets burnt out, tired, or just their- Well, sick you get burnt out too as a trainer, yes. right? Because yeah. you're, you're the hype man. You have to like- <laughs> you know, throw all these different variations at them constantly and it's just- it's one of those things that I mean, you'll get burned out the more clients you get and you're doing this on a day-to-day -day basis. So you got to be smart about it as it, well. It's also hard to scale your business up like this because you just become somebody who's entertaining somebody all the time and you've already charged that and you're, you don't really get any better at you know, writing goofy exercises or entertaining anymore. Where the money is at as a trainer is being the best at what you do, is the best at getting results. When, you, when you build the reputation in the gym yep. as the guy or girl who gets all the clients the results or that everybody wants to come to because they know their shit, like that's how you get to a place where you can start to scale your business up and charge for more money. If you're just the person who is teaching them fun exercises and making them laugh and have a good time, like, okay, you might, you might do all right for a little while. It's going to have a real hard time charging more money for that. Next question is from Z Fitness. What are the benefits of electrolytes? How do they work? How much is a good amount to intake as an active person? So electrolytes, uh, sodium, potassium, magnesium, they are essential for the way that your cells communicate with each other. Um, and when you sweat a lot, when you're active a lot, you excrete a lot of these and you need more of them. So if you've ever tasted your sweat, you know that it's a little salty, for example, you lose mm. sodium quite a bit when you sweat. And the side effects of, of having not enough electrolytes include weakness, reductions in performance, muscle cramping is quite common. Uh, it's not the only reason why muscles cramp, but it's more often than not one of the reasons. So if you get like lots of calf cramping or while you're working out your muscles cramp, this might be one of the reasons why. I actually think it's one of the most common. It is one of the most common. Um, it's not the only reason, like other things can cause that too, but it's the most common. 
Um, you know, if you're very active and you sweat a lot, it probably makes sense to replace your electrolytes by adding them into your diet. Now, I remember the old, do you guys ever read the old Gatorade studies? You know, Gatorade was originally like a, it was a, a, an invention for, I think it was Florida State, if I'm not mistaken. This Florida Gators. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Florida and, University. And original Gatorade was much more, much higher in sodium uh, than it is now. Oh, but, was it really? Yeah, and and they 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 put the ad, like mm -hmm. they put more adequate amounts or appropriate levels of sodium, and they gave it to their athletes, and they saw the performance improve. And it's true, like if you're playing out in the sun, especially in Florida, you're playing football and you're sweating your ass off, and you're losing sodium, you definitely reduce performance. So the studies show that it worked, and then of course now we know Gatorade's super popular. It's not the same formula, by the way, as it originally was. Um, but oh. Go ahead. It, it, it was so apparent um, coming from playing out here in California where the weather's pretty mild. I mean, you get some hot days, but uh, going to the Midwest where the humidity would get up into 90 to 100 uh, percent, I would literally lose about 10 pounds before I even started playing football games. So, uh, you know, losing so, – and it didn't even matter if you're completely hydrated and hydrating yourself uh, going into it. Uh, that was something that was essential – uh, to be able to make sure that I, you know, didn't have that uh, dehydrated, you know, pukey feeling out there on the field. Yeah, I remember as a as an early trainer. Actually, this is when I first uh, opened my personal training studio or wellness studio. It, it, actually, it's even before I had a studio. I rented a space in the back of a tanning salon. There was a gym back there, and then I had a trainer who started working for me. And she was exceptional trainer. Worked with lots of athletes. Was an athletic trainer. And I remember her, I was listening to her. I used to love learning from other trainers, right? So I overheard her talking to one of her clients who was a runner. So this person ran marathons and half marathons. And she said, what I want you to do uh, before every run is to take a pinch of uh, Himalayan you know, sea salt or whatever and just put it in yeah. your water. And I'm like, salt in your water? Why are you having this? So I, I heard this. I'm like, what? So when they left, they said, why did you tell your client to put salt in their water? She's like, well, you lose a lot of sodium when you sweat a lot, and and that makes a big difference in performance. And I was like, oh yeah, like obviously sodium is an electrolyte that makes perfect sense. So I started recommending it to my endurance athletes, and it made uh, a big difference. If you don't eat a lot of processed foods, you I probably need it too. I was just gonna say that. So yep. my views on this changed a lot recently, uh, ever since we got introduced to LMNT. In fact, we we've talked about this before that it actually sat in our studio for. I don't know how many months yep. before any of us even open it up. Because to be honest, um, you know, I did, I don't identify with a marathon runner or somebody who does endurance sports. Uh, I strength train, um, but something else that I do that it, it never really I never thought about it like this was um, I don't eat like I ate when I was 25 years old. As a 25 year old, I ate a lot of crap. Still, I ate a lot of a lot of sodium in my diet because like I was, processed. Yeah, a lot of processed foods. So I ate out all the time, fast food all the time. I still did that even as a trainer. Um, since I'm probably 30 years old, maybe even a little bit before, I eat relatively really clean 95 percent of the time. It's rare that I'm eating processed foods or eating anything that I'd consider you know quote unquote junk food. And I, d I did not expect to feel the performance difference in my workout drinking uh, like a drink like LMNT. And I did. And it makes sense now when I think about the amount of sodium that I'm probably intaking because of eating whole foods most of the time. So now the way I look at it is like either if you're an endurance athlete, I think you're going you're gonna to greatly benefit and or if you eat really clean. Mm -hmm. If you're somebody who doesn't eat a lot of processed foods, even if you're not mm -hmm. an endurance athlete or training hardcore out in the sun or uh, high humidity, I think you'll greatly benefit from doing it. Uh, just just seeing your gym workout if you eat really clean. If you're somebody who doesn't salt, or I shouldn't say salt, because even salting your whole foods is still not enough. If you're just not somebody who eats processed foods and eats out, I think you're going to benefit from it. Yes. I, here's another one. Low-carb dieters. If you eat a ketogenic diet or you eat a low-carbohydrate diet, your body gets rid of lots of water naturally and holds less sodium. You know the whole keto flu that people talk about when they cut their carbs and they're like, oh, you're going to go through this period where you feel kind of crappy in your body. Sometimes that's because you need more sodium. So the reason why people feel crappy when they drop their carbs super low is not necessarily because their carbs are low, but rather because they don't have enough sodium. And I've actually done this test on myself. I, I will intermittently go through periods of ketogenic dieting 
And when I first learned about this, I said, let me give this a shot. Sure enough, you know, went real low carb, saw my body dropping water, increased my sodium, felt phenomenal. I had tons of energy. I was like, holy cow, makes a huge difference. For people who just like to lift weights, like Adam was saying, um, especially if you eat clean, try, you know, a good electrolyte drink with an appropriate amount of sodium. Most electrolyte drinks are too low in sodium because they're afraid of the sodium numbers. Uh, LMNT is a great example. 1,000 milligrams of sodium for a serving. Watch your pumps. That's the biggest thing yeah. I notice. I get crazy pumps from drinking that versus if I if I didn't. It makes a huge difference. Well, working with these kids, uh, it, it reminds me too, just uh, in terms of like hydration in general. Uh, but then I had I had them adding the Himalayan sea salt, but then uh, decided to give them some LMNT and they've had some some great results in terms of a lot of the kids in the beginning were dropping like flies with cramps and uh, you know with with tight muscles and. Uh, you know, once they started doing that pre, uh, practices, because we are going pretty rigorous and they're sweating a lot and it's in the heat, uh, made a dramatic difference. Awesome. Look, if you like our information, you got to head over to mindpumpfree.com. Check out all of our free guides. We have all kinds of guides there that can help you out. They're free guides on fat loss and muscle building and improving your squat. We even have guides for personal trainers. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at mindpumpjustin. Me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.